Good evening and welcome to this, our UNSW Medicine Information Evening. My name's Nick, I'm our Senior Recruitment Product Manager for the Faculties of Science and Medicine and Health, and effectively that means my role is all about ensuring you've got the opportunities to get the questions you might have about studying here at UNSW Medicine, our student experience, the admission side of things answered. And that's really what today is all about. It's a fantastic opportunity where you'll hear from some of our academics, some of our staff, and a number of our current students as well, um, all about what our medicine program is like here at UNSW, as well as the broader medicine and health offerings that we also have available. As we begin though, I'd like to first acknowledge the Bedigal people who are the traditional custodians of this land. I'd also like to extend that respect to elders both past and present and to any other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who might be joining us here tonight. Now as I mentioned, we've got a number of staff and academics and students who are going to be joining us. We're going to kick things off firstly uh, with Dr. Sean Kennedy, our Program Director for the Bachelor of Medical Studies, Doctor of Medicine, doing a bit of a deep dive into what the structure of the program is and what you can expect to get out of the program. Cody Webb, our Faculty Recruitment Officer, is then going to do a deep dive into the admission side of things, which I know is something that everyone always has lots of questions around, and what are the pathways available to medicine, how competitive is it? We'll cover all of that off and we'll, we'll make sure that you've got um, lots of information to take away and be prepared um, to then apply for medicine. We're then going to have a number of our current students joining us here. They're going to be taking us through the student experience side of things, the club and societies, what it's like to be at our rural and regional clinical campuses, what it's like to be out there from day one in a clinical campus as well, and all the friends and amazing experiences you're going to have along the way. So, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we're going to have plenty of time as well for questions. So you'll see on uh, Microsoft Teams there on the side there, you've got the, the question chat box. Throw your questions in. We'll collate all of them and answer as many as we can at the end. You can use the, the thumbs up as well to upvote those questions too. Um, and we'll make sure that we, we, again, leave as much time as we can at the very end um, to make sure that your questions are getting answered. Now I'm going to kick things off with a, a bit of a brief introduction to UNSW. Many of you may be familiar with who we are, um, but for everyone else who's, who's joining us from both near and afar, um, UNSW is a, a top 50 institution. We're very proud of the fact that we've got over 300 degrees that we offer across the undergraduate and postgraduate uh, you know, degree fields, but equally that we've got uh, over 60,000 students here. We're an amazing, vibrant community of students, academics, and staff. We're really trying to better the world through some incredible research and also through some incredible experiences that we offer for, for our students. As we can see on the, the slide there as well, um, you'll see that there's that, that classic phrase that we like to throw around here at UNSW, but m might not mean too much to you at the moment, and that's work integrated learning. And at UNSW, that really is the opportunity for us to embed internships and those really practical opportunities to go out to employers um, and have integrated work experience into your degree. And our work integrated learning team sit behind all of our faculties, and their whole job is to make sure we're embedding as many of those industry and internship opportunities into our programs as possible. Now, for our medicine program, that happens really from day one, where you get the opportunity to go out to our clinical campuses um, and engage with patients on a one-to-one -one basis. But then it, it escalates all the way through, so that by your fifth and sixth years, you're spending all of your time out there in the clinical hospitals, and you'll have very little time on the, the main campus, because it's the best way to, to learn how to become a, a doctor and a clinician. Across all of our other degrees, though, we make sure we embed as many of those learning opportunities as possible so that you can have those, those work integrated chances uh, to work for an organization or an industry and have that count back towards your degree. So we'll talk more about that as we go throughout today's session. 
As you can see on the next slide as well, we're very fortunate to have our graduates uh, ranked extremely highly in uh, the employability rankings. And it speaks very much to the fact that our students love to take risks, they love to get out there, they love to innovate, try things. Um, and it equally speaks to the fact that we are uh, very lucky to have the, the, you know, the number one, or be the number one institution um, for startup founders in Australia. And it speaks to the fact that students get involved in extracurricular opportunities, such as through the Michael Crouch Innovation Centre, uh, where through university backing and funding, we link them in with industry and help them craft their idea. It might be just a kind of a seed of an idea, but craft that idea. Um, students come together from all walks of life across the university, uh, but to really foster um, and, and develop uh, an amazing idea into potentially a company. We see students becoming CEOs at the age of 20, 21 because they've had a brilliant idea and they've run with it with the university's backing. Um, and it, it very much speaks to the innovative, um, you know, and dr driven community that we have here at UNSW. Um, we're also very fortunate to be in the top 50 in the world for medicine and health. And again, it's the fact that you're going to be learning from some absolutely incredible researchers and academics. You're going to have some phenomenal clinical experiences, but you're also going to be learning with a, a number of students who are engaged across very different fields. Um, and that can be across medicine and health, but also more broadly across the university. And we try to encourage as much of that cross collaboration as possible so that you challenge yourself, you challenge your worldviews, but ultimately that leads to your enriching and growing. Um, and then ma you know, making uh, you know, a huge number of students that ultimately become your connections for the rest of your life. Um, so it's a, a very exciting and, and very driven community to be a part of. In terms of the next slide, you can see that there's a, a number of clinical and non-clinical options that we have available for students to consider. Most of you are probably thinking about the Bachelor of Medical Studies, Doctor of Medicine program, which we're definitely going to do a deep dive into today. But you can also see there's a number of clinical programs, everything from optometry and psychology to non-clinical programs like our International Public Health Program, where you really are at the forefront of policy making. We've seen um, health policy and, and decision making at the fore during the last two years as we've gone through the COVID pandemic and those roles have become increasingly important and visible. Um, and it really is the fact that you can make a huge difference, not just in a clinical setting, but also through those non-clinical uh, pathways as well, where you're actually uh, you know, working at a community level a lot of the time. Anyway, that's enough from me. Hopefully that's a bit of a brief introduction to UNSW and UNSW Medicine and Health for you. But now it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Dr. Sean Kennedy, who's going to take us through the Bachelor of Medical Studies Doctor of Medicine program and everything you can look forward to in studying that degree. Thank you, Nick. And yes, I'd like to say hi and welcome to everyone. Thanks for, for joining us. I'm um, really happy to be here to introduce our program, which is how we call the Six Years of Medicine. It's, I'll go in the right direction. So our medical degree is actually two degrees. Once you graduate after six years, you have the Bachelor of Medical Studies and the BMED and the Doctor of Medicine, the MD. And that's sort of one of the first things that makes UNSW different to many of the other medical degrees in, in Australia. The six-year program is divided up into three sections, three phases. Phase one, phase two, phase three, phase one. It's the first two years. And we haven't just done that for convenience. We've actually done that because the style of learning, uh, obviously the material you learn, but how you learn and who you learn with and where you learn changes as you go from one phase to the other. So in phase one, years one and two, are you just people coming out from school, most people, coming in and beginning to study medicine. Of course, you have to learn the basic biomedical sciences, <clears throat> things like anatomy and a bit of biochemistry. But it's really difficult because when I did medicine, we learnt those for the first two years. But that was pretty boring because People who are studying medicine really want to be doctors and want to be working with patients and want to be working with real life issues. And that's what we do at UNSW. From that first year, you're in, we begin to integrate those science courses with clinical courses. And it's set around what we call scenario groups. So it's group learning where you're with your peers, you're learning about the sciences, the basic biomedical sciences plus the clinical sciences based around a scenario, and that scenario, which changes, is a real patient or a real health problem scenario. So from the word go, you're really in there thinking about medicine and health. As I said, these are scenario groups. So you're learning in a group, and group learning, we think, is critically important for, 
for doctors because when you're working as a doctor, you never work alone. You're always working in a team. And we start that team-based learning pretty well straight away. And one of the great things also is that in that phase one, if you're in year one, other people in your group will be from year two. So you can get in, gaining from their experience, getting that little bit of mentorship from them. And then the following year, when you're in two, you can give it back to the students coming behind you. Once you finish year two, we move into year three, which is phase two, and the learning there is, more di is different. So in first phase, in phase years one and two, most of the teaching and learning occurs on campus, which is here at UNSW at Kensington, and also our rural campuses, which you'll hear more about, Wagga Wagga and Port Macquarie. You still spend some time in hospitals seeing real patients during those first two years. But in year three, it flips, and now you spend much more time in the clinical setting. So in a five-day week, you basically spend three days a week in a hospital or in a community health centre or a GP practice, dealing with real patients, with real problems, with real issues. The other two days, it's sort of back to campus, where you'll do more tutorials, lectures, group learning, practical labs. So it's really integrated, still this really strong integration between the sciences and the practice of medicine. That's year three. And year four, and I'll talk more about on the next slide, but year four is a special year at UNSW because that's our research year. Once you finish your research year, then you go into phase three, years five and six. And that's where uh, it's similar to how I did when I did medicine, my final years of medicine, how a lot of the other postgraduate medical degrees are. You're spending a lot of time in the hospital, basically the whole time in hospital and clinical settings. You're learning on the job. So you'll be in groups often of two or three students who are attached to a team. So you might be attached to a team of surgeons who are doing orthopedic surgery. So you come in in the morning, you do ward rounds with them, you go to theatre with them, you review patients before and after, and so you're learning on the job. And then you'll do that for a period of time, maybe four weeks, and then you'll switch and you go to another team. And so over those two years, you work through all the sort of basic disciplines in medicine. Not everything, but all the major things. And also during that fifth year, there's an opportunity for an elective where you get to choose to go somewhere to further your medical studies. And of course, before this thing called COVID hit, most students went overseas and found a great learning opportunity overseas. But even with the pandemic, we've been able to find students varying experiences throughout Australia. And then of course, at the end of the six years, you graduate, you go into an internship. So coming back to that year four, that research year, it's where you actually do your own research. And it was we originally called it the independent learning project because you are working independently. Yes, you'll be in a team, a team of other researchers, perhaps a team including other students, but the research project you own, it's yourself. So you work on it during that year. At the end of the year, you put in a report, which is like a mini thesis, and it gets graded. And many of those then will go on to be publications where you're an author in a medical journal. Many students take the research that they do and present it at international meetings. So like they might be doing research in neurosurgery and then end up going to an international conference with neurosurgeons and standing up and talking about the research that they've done during this fourth year. In the last couple of years, we've moved that, the, the learning during that fourth year, so that more students can also achieve an honours qualification when they graduate. And so the research has changed a little bit, but we've also brought some coursework in. So you're doing research, plus you're doing some coursework. We've got this great course that started this year called Value-Based Healthcare. So again, you're doing research, but you're still learning about health, learning about being a doctor. But research is critically important to being a doctor. So even if once you graduate, you don't get out there and become a full-time researcher, all of us who are working in medicine still need to understand research, need to be able to do research from time to time. So if I'm explaining to a patient why, so I'm a paediatrician, I work with children. So if I'm explaining to a parent why I think their child should be vaccinated against COVID, I need to be able to confidently say that I've looked at the evidence, I understand the evidence, I've weighed up the risks, I know the pros and the cons. And I can do that because I understand research and I have a bit of grounding in research skills. So even if you don't do research, you need to be able to understand research as a doctor. 
And the research that you can do during this fourth year could be anything. It could be working in a laboratory. It could be um, working on cancer cells, on cancer cures. It could be helping a surgeon do a trial about uh, whether different trauma surgery leads to better outcomes. It could be working in a public health unit, looking at big world issues like pandemics. It could be working in indigenous help, health, trying to close the gap for our um, First Nations people. So there's limitless opportunities for the research you can do that year. And this is really sets you up for the future because medicine, you never stop learning. You, we have a six year course, but once you finish that six year course, you're going out, you'll do your internship, your residency in a hospital, still learning all the time, building on the skills and knowledge that you've learned at UNSW. And then if you decide to go into training, you want to go into become a general practitioner or a paediatrician or a psychiatrist or an obstetrician, you'll need to do further training. But then even once you finish all that training, we never stop as doctors. At UNSW, we set you up for that. We teach you how to have this ongoing inquiring mind, reflective clinical practice, being able to evaluate and being able to work in teams. So all the way you can keep growing throughout your career. And so your career may take you into any field. So where you give you this broad basis and from there you can be launched anywhere you want to go into medicine. Whether it's any of those uh, basic disciplines and clinical streams, surgery, medicine, oncology, cardiology, gastroenterology, neurology, radiology, anaesthetics, or goes into sort of more non-clinical roles, like Nick mentioned, the public health physicians, who have been leaders for us in Australia and all around the world during this last pandemic. And many of those people that you've been seeing on television, giving advice to governments, giving advice to us as a population, in local news, are UNSW graduates and or are still working at UNSW teaching the next generation. And medical education is something that you can go into in the future. So I obviously teach in medical education and I'm also a doctor working in clinical practice. And most of the people that will be teaching you when you're at UNSW are like that. We have this balance between actually working as doctors, doing some research and being able to educate you. So I've, along the way, I think I've explained some of the things that make UNSW stand out and really special for the medical degree. But also you might be thinking, what's the difference between it? Why there's an undergraduate degree where it comes straight from school? So we come straight from school and we give you that basis. We teach you all along the way. Versus some of the, most of the other degrees in UNSW and around Australia now, which are postgraduate, where you would have to go in and have to come after doing another uh, course of study. So you'd be learning how to be a student and learning how to study, developing academic skills before you come in to study medicine. And you have a less sort of, obviously you don't have to do the six years, but you add up the under, undergraduate degree you've done plus the postgraduate degree later. But at the end, you still come out as a doctor, work as an intern, and as I said, launch into the rest of your career. And just finally, at UNSW, that teaching I've mentioned here at UNSW, up, up the hill, the top of campus is where the biomedical precinct is, with the Wallaceworth building and the new buildings. And then if we just look across the road, literally across the road, there's a building site, and that's the building site for a new building going up at Prince of Wales Hospital, which is the Randwick campus, the Randwick Health Precinct, and there'll be a new health translation hub being built there too, and on that campus is Prince of Wales Hospital, Royal Hospital for Women, Sydney Children's Hospital. And then we have campuses, St Vincent's, St George, Sutherland, South West Sydney, which includes Liverpool, Bankstown, Fairfield, Campbelltown. So our, our campuses in Sydney uh, service about 40% of the population. And that's where all these sites where you can learn. And then we've got the rural campuses, which we've talk, mentioned a bit and we'll talk more about. But you can see on this map, our rural campuses are up the north coast, Coffs Harbour and Port Macquarie, and then um, southwest, Wagga Wagga, Albury and uh, Griffith. So that's the little brief snapshot of what the six year program looks like. And I'll hand back to, to Nick um, to exp take you further in this journey. Thanks. And uh, yeah, it is, look, it is very much a, a snapshot uh, into 
the program itself here, but we've got plenty of time to dive more into the student experience a little bit later. I know there's been many questions coming through though around the admission side of things, the, the entry requirements, um, how you actually go through the application process for medicine, because it is a you know, quite involved process, there's several steps. And I'm delighted to have my colleague Cody Wem, our faculty recruitment officer for the Faculty of Medicine and Health, who's gonna now do a deep dive into everything you need to know on the admissions front. So Cody, over to you. Thanks, Nick. My name is Cody Wem, and I'm the Faculty Recruitment Officer here at UNSW Medicine and Health. And similarly to Nick, my role is to ensure that you have all of the answers that are gearing you up to study with us here at Medicine and Health. So to kick us off, the MedMD program is the most competitive in New South Wales and has been for the last five years, which means it's an incredibly competitive program. And while we have only about 200 places for domestic students, it doesn't mean that you can't be one of those students. So just give it your best shot. So our application timeline follows the following. So first up, you're gonna sit the UCAT ANZ. Now the UCAT is the University Clinical Admissions Test, and you'll need to apply by the 17th of May to sit that ex exam in July, August. So we take that, um, and combine it with your selection rank and then offer interviews for students. So next up in the timeline, you'll need to apply to the medicine application portal. Now, this is a separate website to um, the UAC preferences. So you'll need to apply directly to UNSW for that. Now, while it's not an um, admissible and it won't be accredited to your scores. It is just a chance for us to get to know you as a person. And it also allows you to put in your preferences for campuses as well. Then next up, you'll need to apply to UAC with your preferences and all, both of those are due the 30th of September. And then once we have all of that information, we take your selection rank and combine it with your UCAT score, then we will offer interviews. And that timeline follows around December, January. So taking a deeper dive into that application timeline, we have the registrations for UCAT has already opened on the 1st of March. Then we're looking at the medicine application portal, which will open on the 1st of April. So the same as UAC. Then we're looking at the UCAT ANZ sessions. So anywhere from July through August. And then we have our UNSW Open Day where you can come on campus and get a really great experience um, and see the facilities firsthand. And then we have our ATAR release and our interviews following that. So all of these dates are on the website down the bottom. So you can see unsw.2 forward slash medicine dates. And that's where you're gonna find all of the most up-to-date dates and information. So the information you have all been waiting for of applicants who received offers in 2022, the selection ranks are as follows on the screen. So our local scores, um, median is 99.83 and lowest 99.5. And for rural, it is slightly lower through the rural entry scheme, and that is 97.1 and 91.3. So we do also have on the screen some assumed knowledge and recommended studies. So just a reminder that UNSW doesn't have any prerequisites for subjects. However, we do assume and recommend that you study um, English Standard and Chemistry. So the only adjustment factors that are eligible through medicine is the Educational Access Scheme. And so that's assessed through UAC, which make up your selection rank. So it is your raw ATA, plus any adjustment factors, which would be through EAS. Next up, we have the UCAT ANZ. So that is our university clinical aptitude test, and you, you take that uh, through UCAT. So the scores are on the screen as follows, local 3139 and 2890. And for our rural students, again, it is a little bit lower, 2774, 2520. So just a reminder that the lowest percentile that we take for eligibility uh, for our interviews is the lowest 50%. So you have to make sure that you are above that in order to be considered for those interviews. 
Speaking of the interviews, we received 3,070 applications this year for our 2022 program, and we held 326 interviews. Now, looking at our rural students for the rural entry scheme, it was 374 applications and 165 interviews. So for the 2023 intake, we're looking at running those rural application interviews in November, December, looking at New South Wales and ACT December, January, and interstate and overseas applicants in January. Looking forward now to our campus selection. So you have a uh, chance to select between Wagga Wagga, Port Macquarie and Kensington campus, which Dr. Sean Kennedy talked about a little bit earlier. So you can do all six years at those two rural campuses, or you can come here to Kensington. Um, so you specify your preference in the medicine application portal. You can preference only one of those or you can preference all of them. Obviously, preferencing all of them gives you a higher chance of getting in. But please make sure you're only preferencing a campus that you'd be more than happy to study at. Now, looking at bonded places. So we used to talk about bonded and unbonded places and being able to preference a bonded place for a higher chance of getting in. Now, we give students a rank in our selection process and the top 141 students are going to receive an unbonded place and the next 57 students are going to receive the bonded places. So we don't preference these anymore. Um, so you won't get the chance to um, select that option or not. Um, but just a reminder that bonded places means it's a return of service uh, for three years within 18 years of completing your degree. So you will need to go to a rural or regional area to complete those three years of service for New South Wales Health. So it is, um, Anywhere in Australia, actually, that is classified in our rural or regional system. Um, and fun fact, Tasmania, the whole of Tasmania is classified as rural for the purposes of that. So let's look at special admission schemes. So obviously our ATAR, our selection rank and UCAT is extremely high, but never fear, there are definitely pathways to get into our program. So we do have the lateral entry scheme. So that is for our UNSW medical science students. So they complete two years of that degree and then using their core medical science uh, subjects, they'll then apply to the medicine program. And so instead of using the ATAR, uh, the selection rank, we'll use the marks from those scores in their core medical science subjects. You will have to sit the UCAT ANZ again, and that new score will be counted um, in the selection process. So again, it is a very competitive um, option and there are only up to 10 applicants selected each year. So make sure that you're not selecting that program if you're not happy to graduate with it. So just making sure that you are more than happy to graduate with that degree. Now looking at the Indigenous Entry Scheme, which is a wonderful program run through Neurogilly. And so it's a three week head start um, into the medical program. So that's for any Australian Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander students who'd like to come and join us for the pre-med program. And you're really getting a head start into the scenario groups, which is the first year um, of UNSW medicine. So you just apply with your high school marks and a personal statement through Neurogilly. Um, you can find out more about that pathway in the link on the bottom of the slide. Next up, we have our Rural Entry Scheme, which we're gonna be hearing a little bit more about from our um, rural students who will be coming up very shortly. Um, but to apply through the Rural Entry Scheme, um, you need to have lived in a defined Australian rural area, which is the MMM3 to seven. So that is the Modified Monash Model Classification, which has just changed this year. So we are using that system now. Um, so for the last, that is for the last five uh, consecutive or 10 cumulative years from the age of five. So that's from kindergarten through to year 12 that you need to have lived in a rural area as classified there. So just a note, they do have um, slightly lower entry requirements for the ATAR um, 
and UCAT, and they are interviewed separately. So they are generally held at the local, um, your closest rural clinical campus to your home address, and you will need to travel there to complete those interviews. Make sure that you're selecting rural entry scheme on the medicine application portal when you are applying to us directly. And last but not least, we have our gateway entry scheme, which is for low socioeconomic students um, in gateway identified schools in metropolitan areas. So the, the full uh, eligibility criteria is available on the medicine website. Um, so on the link that is on the screen right now. And again, there are up to 10 places available each year. So it is competitive as well. So if you're attending one of those gateway schools, it's a really great option for you to consider. Um, now moving on to our international applicants, just a quick run through um, of the international timeline. They do, uh, you will need to sit an admissions test, but for international students, we accept the ISAT as well as the UCAT. So these results must be available by the 30th of November. ISAT do have several testing periods throughout the year, so you just need to make sure that your results will be available by the 30th of November. Now, if you are attending high school in Australia, you will need to apply through UAC International, or if you are um, attending high school overseas, then you would be applying through UNSW Apply Online. And just note on the screen there that there are a couple of different dates. So UAC is the 30th of September, whereas Apply Online and the Medicine Application Portal for international students is the 30th of November. And then we actually interview international students throughout the year. So if you have your high school results, if you've sat the ISAT already, you can apply and we will be taking applications now um, and applying um, those scores into interviews in April, all the way through to mid-January when the uh, domestic student applications close. Um, so, some commonly accepted English language requirements. Um, we do need to meet these in order to be eligible for the program. So just looking uh, on the screen now, so we have our IELTS at 7.0, TOEFL at 94. And if you see the link on the screen there, you can see the full um, list of English language requirements. Now, looking at alternate pathways. So if you don't get in next year, please don't worry. It's only a matter of when, not if you're going to get into the medicine program. So if you are determined you, you do want to be a doctor and this is your dream, there is a place for you. So you can always sit the UCAT ANZ next year and reapply. You could get a head start on another degree, any degree you like at UNSW and use your WAM, which is your weighted average mark of those courses. And we take a best of. So whether your best score is your ATAR or whether it is your university uh, scores, we take a best of there. You just need to make sure that you've met a minimum of 96 ATAR or for rural students, it's a minimum 91. And then your tertiary study must be a minimum of a 70 WAM. So we take that best of and use that as your selection rank and combine it with your UCAT score. So as I was saying earlier, you could also consider the lateral entry scheme through UNSW Medical Science, but again, it is a super competitive option. Um, another option we do give out is uh, postgraduate medical studies. So we don't offer any postgraduate programs in medicine for clinical settings here at UNSW, but you could attend another Sydney university who does offer postgraduate programs. Um, or you could try alternative um, clinical or non-clinical uh, degrees within medicine. So that could be anything um, what Nick was talking about earlier, say in uh, psychology or maybe even in um, international public health, looking more into that policy side. So I guess that's all from me, but I do want to leave you with um, good luck for all of your studies um, and we hope to see you at UNSW shortly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cody. Now, look, I, I appreciate there was a lot of information there. The admission side of things um, is something we always get lots of questions about, and I can see that there's 
plenty of those questions that are filtering through. Uh, we've cracked the 100 mark in terms of the questions that you've asked already, which is brilliant. So keep submitting them. Make sure you use the upvotes, uh, the little thumbs up there, so that we know which are the, the ones that everyone wants answered. But the great thing is that this is going to be made available on demand as well for you after the event. So tomorrow you'll receive a, a, an email from us which has the link. Um, and if you've missed anything at all in that admission section that you want to double check, you're welcome to watch it at your leisure. Now, we're going to change track slightly here and talk a bit more about the, the student experience itself. Dr. Kennedy touched on this earlier today. Um, but now we're going to bring up two of our current students, Josh Lowinger and Angela Zhu, our president and vice president of the UNSW Medical Student Society. And they're going to do a deep dive into what it's like to be inside the classroom and also everything else that goes on outside the classroom as well. So Josh and Angela, over to you. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in today. So I'm Josh. Um, I'm a fourth year medical student, and I'm the president of the UNSW Medical Society for 2022. And I'm Angela. I'm also in fourth year, and I'm the vice president of medical society for this year as well. So being medical students, um, we were in your very position just a few short years ago. I remember watching this exact presentation and thinking, oh my gosh, what to expect in medicine? Um, so we're here to hopefully clear that up for you guys a little bit and answer some of your questions. But I think we can both genuinely say that doing medicine at UNSW has been one of the most amazing things we've ever done in our lives. I cannot rate highly enough how, an amazing, how amazing the community is, how welcoming it is, um, and I just really feel at home in the program. And so we're going to give you guys a bit of a taste test about what it's like. So. Firstly, within the medicine program, as Sean mentioned before, we have three phases. And the first of these is phase one, which you'll come straight into right out of um, whatever you're doing at the moment. And so it's a really close-knit cohort um, within medicine colleges. As you can see from some of these pictures here, we have a lot of fun um, in medicine. And from day one, you really start to feel like you're part of a big medicine family, which is really nice. It's full of something called case integration and clinical integration. So as Sean mentioned, you're put in scenario groups, and these become like your little family where you're learning together, you're problem solving, you're doing real life medical scenarios, which is such a great thing to be able to do at such a uh, early stage in your medical degree. And you also get to be in hospital from your very first term of medicine, which is something very rare and unique to the UNSW program. I remember in my very first hospital session having the privilege of taking a history from a woman who had recently been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Very profound stuff, and we're very lucky to be able to you know, talk to patients at their most vulnerable, and it really makes you see why medicine is such a worthwhile career. And the other thing that's really great about phase one is that you're learning with your peers. So your first year and your second year are all integrated. You get to learn from your peers. You become really close within the community. And then you repay that favor the next year um, and teach it to the young years as well. So lots of great opportunities. There's also a huge range of events that you can attend and experience. We have more than 300 events every single year. Some of the ones you can see on your screen include things like AMSA convention, um, where we dress up in our UNSW super suits. Um, we've got our scrub crawl. Um, best event of all is med show, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, so we have so many amazing things that we will go into a bit more depth about. And here are two of the big things, which are MedCamp and peer mentoring. So in your first week of medicine, uh, you'll attend MedCamp with the other 300 first years, which is an incredible experience, loads of fun, and you basically get to know your, fa your new family for the next six years and the rest of your life. And peer mentoring, you get grouped up with older students from second through to sixth year, and they are basically there to guide you whenever you need. They answer your questions. Um, so on the whole, it's just you know, a really supportive, welcoming environment that makes it not at all difficult to settle into the medicine program. So on the whole phase one, it establishes a really strong foundation for medicine, and it engenders a powerful sense of that UNSW med community. Now phase two, your third and uh, fourth year, so you get put straight into hospital for three days a week, which is such a great opportunity. You're getting to see so many patients every single day, really pushing yourself, um, learning you know, your clinical history taking, your examination skills. Um, and you also get uh, linked up with some really incredible doctors, experts in the field. Um, you can also go rural. As you can see in that top photo, we have our uh, Wagga Wagga campus there, um, which gives you really great hands-on clinical exposure. Um, and so a lot of students like to go rural. And then in fourth year, we have our independent learning project, um, or honors year. 
um, which again is another thing unique to the UNSW Medicine Program. Every single person gets a whole year dedicated to that research project, which actually gives you quite a competitive advantage because you get your name on a paper as a first author publication, um, which kind of put, puts you streets ahead of other people when it comes to things like going for specialties. But it's also just really interesting, great experience. I'm currently doing a project on um, uveal melanoma, so a bit of oncology and ophthalmology, which are two things I'm considering potentially doing in the future. Um, and you can pick anything under the sun that you're interested in. And then that brings us to fifth and sixth year, phase three. Um, as Sean mentioned, you get to go on an elective term at the end of fifth year, and you can go anywhere in the world. Lots of people will do you know, one overseas and like one potentially at a rural um, site, anywhere in Australia as well, which is such a great experience, very maturing, um, and sets you up super well. And as Sean mentioned as well, you're in hospital five days a week. It's very full time, giving you that incredible foundation. You're part of the team, you learn from the multidisciplinary team, you learn from your patients, and you're prepared to graduate as a doctor with a bright future ahead of you. As you can see in that top photo, um, all of the sixth years celebrating at Grad Ball um, with the rest of their medicine family. So just to quickly wrap up my section, some highlights so far. In the top row, you can see some of my highlights from first year. Top left, that's my foundations scenario group. So my very first group of friends from med, and we're still incredibly tight right now in fourth year. You can see um, some photos from MedCamp. Um, in the top row, you can see Scrub Crawl and MedBall. Then in the second row are all photos from something called MedShow, which Angela will talk a little bit more about, but it is the best. It's like a big performance that we put on. And then in the bottom row are some highlights from over the last year. Um, I went on a trip to Dubbo, where we um, went and took examinations on um, some kids in primary school's ears um, because of the discrepancies in health in that area, um, but also just super fun, you know, like playing music for the kids, um, teaching them about ear health. Um, and then some other photos there, me with the new first years this year, now as a fourth year, getting to welcome them. And that final photo is me with my sister Gemma, who's in second year, so I'm very lucky to have um, you know, one of my family members in med. But even if you don't have a family member in med, everyone just feels like family. Angela over here feels like a sister to me. And uh, speaking of which, I will pass over to her to talk to you about the rest of the things. Thanks, George. Um... Yeah, so I'll just be talking a little bit more about student life in UNSW and um, what you can do outside of studying medicine here. So firstly, we have ARC. So ARC is basically um, the representation of all students at UNSW. Um, and there's a bunch of clubs that you can join. So you can see on the screen, um, we've got dancing, we've got cheerleading, um, and there's academic clubs as well that you can join, sports and music. Um, so no matter what your interest is, um, there's really a place here for everyone. And um, it's more, it really gives you a holistic experience of university here at UNSW. Um, there's also some fun ones, like I'm part of Dog Society. Um, um, why wouldn't you want to be part of Dog Society? Um, so yeah, it's really, really great. Um, and there's some more photos here as well. So there's um, this cool group called Yellow Shirts, um, who basically take everyone around um, orientation week as well. And you really get to find your place here, no matter um, where you're from, what your interests are, you really get to meet friends with similar interests to you. Um, and yeah, the reason why we're both here is UNSW Medical Society. So I'll talk a little bit about that as well and um, how we got involved in it. Um, so yeah, that's our very nice logo. Um, but when we came in as first years, um, there was med soccer was just this thing that um, you know was all the students were part of, um, and we're just wondering like what exactly is it and what do we represent? So we have three main goals. Our first one is advocacy. So we have a team of year representatives that um, make sure all the student feedback and questions are heard. Um, we communicate really closely with faculty and we're really lucky to have such a close relationship with faculty as well. Um, we communicate very closely to them. Um, there's also experiences. So Josh has already mentioned MedCamp um, and Scrub Crawl, but we already have um, some really cool ones like yoga. We recently had an origami making night. Um, um, and community as well. So we're basically here um, to make sure that as you go through all six years of your medical degree, um, you come out a doctor, but you also come out with lifelong memories and lifelong friends as well. Um, and that's really what we're here to do for you guys, to so just make sure that your experience at UNSW is the best that it can possibly be. 
Um, so we've got representation and support across a bunch of different areas. Um, our first one is mental health and well-being. So we're really lucky to work closely with our faculty uh, well-being officer as well. Um, an example of what we've achieved last year is we were able to work with faculty and implement these things called self-care days, uh, where basically if students feel burnt out or too stressed, they can take self-care days. I think there's two a term. Um, and it's basically just a day that we can just have off, um, recharge, and and um, you can log that as part of um, your attendance as well. So faculty thinks um, will register as a valid reason for not attending classes, um, which we're really, really lucky to have. Uh, we also help with assessments as well um, to help you guys prepare for your exams, uh, curriculum development, so we're working with faculty for that, clinical learning, so we've just um, released this years one to six uh, mentoring program, um, which is going to be great because when you uh, become doctors and you're working in hospitals, um, you want to have that pay it forward culture and be able to teach medical students who come through um, even when you're a doctor as well. So we're trying to build that culture and community right here in medicine. And we also have equity and diversity inclusion. So you can see um, we've got our women in medicine logo and we've also we've got our queer offices and we also have um, offices representing indigenous students, international students and rural students as well. Um, for those of you who might have a good idea of what interest group you want to go into, we also have a special interest group. So um, for students who are, for example, interested in surgery, we have a surgical society, just basically connecting them with students with similar interests as well and helping them network and also inviting um, clinicians and surgeons as well to come along and guide them through that process as they kind of figure out what they want to do. Um, we've also got MedShow. Uh, Josh and I both love MedShow. Um, it's just basically this great um, way that you can um, have some fun and challenge yourself, be on a stage. It's this big production um, with singing, dancing, and acting. Um, so when you do join, uh, we will be still be here plugging MedShow along with you guys. Um, but we think that it, it's just a really great way to make some friends as well. Um, so yeah, I know that um, you know, you're still thinking about applying into medicine um, and we really hope to see you here at UNSW and if you do um, come into the medicine program we would highly recommend you join the MedSoc team. As you can see we've got a team of over 70 uh, representatives um, with a wide range of portfolios, um, academics and events and year representation as well um, and we think we've, we've both had a really great time here um, as part of our medical degree. Um, yeah, so that's a bit of our structure as well. Um, so we've got 250 volunteers as well, um, and we've got a bunch of portfolios, like I said. And yeah, we really hope um, to see you here at UNSW. Um, just a final slide showing uh, the top, which is MedCamp, uh, which Josh has talked about, and the bottom, which is Grad Ball, which is um, our year six students um, coming together and celebrating the graduation together. Um, and we'll hand back to Nick now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Excellent. Thank you very much, Josh and Angela. Um, I think the family analogy is a really good one. You could be watching Netflix right now, but it's much more wholesome being here tonight. So thank you again for joining us. Um, we're going to now try something. We're really pushing the bounds here um, with the, uh, the magic and wonders of technology. We're going to throw to our colleagues um, over in our rural clinical campuses. So Campbell McMaster, a sixth year medicine student at Wagga Wagga, um, and Georgia Pittman, who is a fifth-year medicine student at our Port Macquarie campus. So, uh, Campbell, I'm going to throw over to you. Hopefully you can hear me, um, but over to you. Ah, all right. Thanks, Nick. Um, so, just moving on. Um, so, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Campbell. I'm one of the six-year medical students based at the Wagga Wagga Rural Clinical Campus. Um, I've done three of my six years here. Um, and really love the, the environment that the Wagga campus gives, gives for me. Um, a bit about my background. Um, I grew up on a farm um, near Hilston. Um, it's a wheat and cattle farm. And just for a bit of context, um, Hilston's about 700 kilometres inland of Sydney. Um, so yeah, I grew up there. I um, went to my local primary school and then went to boarding school at a place called Yanko Agricultural High School. Um, which again is still a rural um, school but loved it and then went through all the different hoops that you guys have talked about today um, and started doing um, medicine um, in 2017. Um, so just to talk to the slide a little bit, um, the bottom left one there 
um, image that you can see when I look about 11 um, is me actually in year 12 just finishing the interview with my mum um, being supportive there. And hopefully that's all you guys one day. Um, a few of the other pictures are sort of just the life um, in Wagga um, at the campus here as well as just the surrounding areas with a lot of my peers. So most of these guys are in my year. Um, the top left one is us at the Wagga races. Um, just sort of celebrating um, the year. Um, the next one along is us climbing a place called The Rock. Um, and in the third one, um, that's us at the, the campus with me and a mate um, sharing a cake for our birthday that someone else has cooked for us. Um, and then the final one is um, my share house that I lived with um, these guys in, in our third year, um, which was probably one of the best years I had. Um, we lived um, with, with a 10 minute walk from the hospital um, and one thing to say is the cost of living in a rural area um, is a lot more affordable um, compared to living in Sydney for a long time. So it's a good aspect about that. Uh, um, so with the rural campuses, uh, especially Wagga and Port Macquarie, um, and also known in Griffith as well, um, they're getting sort of newer buildings um, that are really close to home for everyone uh, if you're from a rural area. So Port Macquarie's had theirs for a long time and Wagga's in the process of getting a new building that's going to be developed in the next two years. Um, but the idea is to bring um, rural students back to the country to do their training and then hopefully you can stay in a place close to you. So some of the campuses um, that have can, um, rural clinical campuses include Port Macquarie, Wagga Wagga, Griffith, Albury um, and Coffs Harbour. Uh, yeah. Um, and then a good aspect um, about being at a rural um, campus is sort of the smaller class sizes and that sort of relates to the ultimate sort of thing that happens in a rural campus um, as compared to Sydney as how, how I viewed it um, is you get a greater teaching experience in the hospital as well as in the campus as well. So you, you sort of have a tight knit community with not only your peers but also the doctors um, because you get to see them every day. Um, when you're in Sydney at one of those hospitals you have almost a thousand students probably trying to, or a, few, a lot, lot more students trying to interact with the doctors and there's a lot more doctors so you sort of spread out a bit. Whereas in sort of rural campuses, you get to see the doctors you're with every day as well as um, the students across all the years. Um, and you have a really tight community um, as well as the teaching with the doctors. It's a lot more relatable with them and they try and really help you out. Um, yeah, so I'm going to throw to Georgia for the next half of the presentation. Yep, hi everyone. My name is Georgia. I am a fifth year in Port Macquarie. Um, I've been here since I was in my first year. I, to tell you a little bit about me, I come from Moree, which is um, a little town six hours northwest of Port Macquarie. Um, and I grew up on a beef cattle farm. Um, so coming to Port Macquarie was a Big change, um, but I love it here on the coast. So just some of the pictures that I have put in my slide, some of them are just scenic pictures around Port Macquarie um, and a few are from some of the events that our society holds here in, in Port. Um, and it's really great. All of our years all hang out together um, all the way from first year to sixth year and um, any events that are held, everyone's invited. So it's um, it's really great. Everyone gets along and yeah, so um, in the middle you can see a couple of pictures of things we like to do on the weekends. Just go down to the beach or go for a walk along the coastal track in Port Macquarie. Um, and then up on the top right there's just a picture from one of our clinical skills sessions where we learnt how to um, scrub in and glove and gown for um, operating theatres. Um, and yeah, so as Campbell was saying, our class sizes are pretty small. So that was three of us in one class. So it's really uh, personalised one on one kind of teaching. And um, yeah, it's a really, really great experience being here. Um, might go to the next slide. So, yeah, as I was saying, so I've been in Port Macquarie since first year. So we started off with a class size of uh, around 25. Um, 
which has changed through the years and people can choose to go to different um, clinical schools after phase one, which is the first and second year, or after phase two, which is the, uh, the third and fourth year. Um, or you can choose to stay in Port Macquarie for the whole six years um, and now in Wagga Wagga as well. So 2021 was the first year where they've had um, first years starting at Wagga Wagga. Um, but yeah, you can get, get a great experience out of um, being in those small class sizes and um, and have, like going to some of the rural clinical schools and the um, smaller hospitals. You can have a lot more one-on-one -on -one experience and um, clinical teaching. So we'll go to the next slide. So this is just a bit about the student societies. Um, so they're all pretty much, the, they do the same thing. So um, I've been a part of the Port Medical Society's committee since I was in second year, just with various roles, um, such as like the social, um, the social rep and the secretary and just a few things in between. Um, and it's really great way to get involved with all of the students and, um, and the society and get involved with events and organising things. And so there's lots of yeah social events and sporting opportunities that you can be a part of a team. We have a multi-sports, we have a few teams that play in the multi-sports competition in Port Macquarie, which is where you just rotate through all different sports. So if you're like me and can't choose one that you like, you can rotate through basketball and then netball the next week and then soccer the next week. And yeah, it's more, more fun than competitive, but um, yeah, good thing to get involved with. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think that pretty much sums up my section. I'll hand back to Nick in Kensington. Thank you very much for, for that, Georgia and Campbell. Um, great to have you joining us here remotely tonight. Um, and look, we're going to now dive into the Q&A component of the session. I know we're very rapidly approaching 7.30. Um, we're happy to hang around for an extra 15 minutes to answer all your questions because, um, again, we know that it is, you know, applying to medicine is a, a, you know, a massive commitment, and we want to make sure that you've got as much information as you can to make that process as easy as possible. So. We've had a few questions around the interview side of things, and we did touch on this a bit earlier, but Sean, I might throw it to you. Um, in terms of the interview, what are we actually looking for in students, and, and how's the interview structured? Yeah, so if you think about it, you know, we've got three entry um, criteria. So it's your ATAR, how you go academically, and the UCAT, which looks at some other ways of thinking and answering questions. But the interview is also we, how we can find out more about you, because we want people who will thrive in our course, who can work in teams. We want people who, who understand their own personal motivation. Uh, we want people who are going to be great doctors, you know, good students. So the interview, I can't give you the, the, the answer as to what are the answers for the interview question. We always get asked that. And, and that's because the answers aren't important. It's how you answer them and it's who you are. The interview is meant to find out more about you. So the structure is, there are structured questions, but there's not a right answer. It's how you answer it. Fair enough. And look, I guess a follow-on question, which I might actually answer as well, is you know, do we encourage coaching um, or you know, going through a, a private institution to really prepare you for the interviews? And it's a really common question we get. And, and I think it speaks to what you were saying, that really we're looking for authenticity. We're looking for you know, what you're passionate about, what you're going to bring to, to medicine. And coaching often hinders that with students. We often can tell straight away if a student's got pre-prepared answers that they're not being authentic. So um, we really discourage that. Just, just be, be natural, be honest. Is there anything else, Sean, that you'd, you'd recommend students do to prepare for the interview itself? I think, you know, know yourself and understand why it is that you want to do medicine and why you want to do medicine at UNNSW. And, and not, not just everything we said tonight about what a great course it is, but actually, you know, what motivates you? Why? For sure. Um, so look, Angela, I might throw it to you now. We were talking more uh, earlier about that, that student experience, and it sounds like there's lots that goes on outside the classroom. Um, but as students ask, just how easy is it to balance your studies with all of the extracurriculars? 
Yeah, um, that's a really good question, actually. Um, so I'm currently in fourth year, um, and I do we do find that um, you can do most of your extracurriculars or make the most of your time um, from phases one to two, and from phase three, since you're in hospital, it, get, it does get a bit busier. Um, but you do have time for um, things to enjoy in your life in that time as well. Um, I guess for me personally, um, I always prioritised um, getting my lectures and my studies done, um, but I did also find that I had a lot of time left over um, to enjoy going out with my friends and um, to enjoy doing extracurriculars, um, get involved in MedSoc um, and to do some um, extra work outside of it as well. Um, so in terms of um, the amount of time that you spend doing classes, um, you are there four or five days a week in the first couple, um, the first couple years. Um, but you know, you, you're not there from nine to five um, and you you know, I'm sure you're all organized and I'm sure that uh, you're all organized with your time as well. Um, so the short answer to that question is yes, I could definitely find that I could balance it um, pretty well as long as you kind of stay on top of your work and um, keep, your, keep your time organized. Yeah. No, look, I, I think very fair. I'm, I'm probably someone who's not that organized when it comes to time, uh, but I, I can definitely attest that, you know, seeing how vibrant the campus is and how much is going on, it really is just about, you know, being kind to yourself in, in those first few weeks as you're transitioning into the program, getting a feel for it. I'm sure it takes time. And um, as you were saying, it, it is about prioritizing, I guess, in those earlier phases, um, that balance, because it is, it is going to ramp up and it is a, a program that requires a certain level of commitment and maturity um, and that there is that expectation as well. Um, so Josh, I'm going to throw over to you, um, and there's a question here around the independent learning project or the honours year, and you were touching a little bit on your, your project earlier. Um, for, for you so far, and I guess for some of the, the students you know that have gone into, um, you know, who are in senior years, the fifth and sixth students who have already gone through that process, what, what are some of the things that you've enjoyed, that they've enjoyed, and, and really what are the benefits of doing that research year as a, a dedicated year? Yeah, um, well, I, I think the you know, ILP honours year, it's an amazing year. Um, not only do you get to do your research project actually, but you also get to do something called general education courses, um, which is that you can pick any course under the sun um, and you get to do that as well. So for me, I did a course called Science in the Cinema, which was like analyzing film for like the scientific aspects. And I also did a course called Personal Finance, which was really useful personally. Um, so not only do you have your research project, but you get to do that. But in terms of the research project itself, um, such great experience, you know, you get to pick any hospital, um, you can do it anywhere you like, any topic you like, you learn skills in research, in teamwork, in collaboration, in organisation, um, and a lot of people also end up doing multiple projects, so for me at the moment I'm balancing several different projects alongside work, alongside clinical learning as well, um, so it really does throw you into every aspect of medicine. And then you also asked about the fifth and sixth years. I think everyone just loves the level of clinical experience that you get. Um, I don't think you could be better prepared for your internship and future as a doctor. Fair enough. And I guess staying with that train of, of you know, future careers and what's out there, Sean, I might throw back over to you. Um, as students asked here, do we really just prepare students for the clinical side of things or, or do graduates go on to pursue non-clinical careers as well? And if so, what does that look like? The answer is yes. So, and one of the wonderful things about medicine as a degree is you go into it and you're guaranteed of a job almost. Uh, well, you are really, an internship in, in um, somewhere in Australia. But you don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay working in that hospital. You can use the skills that you've gone and gone off into some of those non-clinical areas, which we mentioned, which are things like public health, which are medical administration, running hospitals, if you really wanted to do that, um, research. Uh, and, and then the, when we talk about being a doctor, you know, it can be sitting across from a patient, it can be having your hands inside a patient, but it also can be looking at patients' x-rays and MRIs and radiologies and, you know, looking down a lab and doing pathology reports or, you know, even forensic medicine. It, there's, there's just all aspects. And uh, look, uh, I, there's a few questions here that I might actually take, which are a little bit more on the admission side of things now. Um, as students ask, look, if I take a gap year, does that mean uh, that I can't apply for UNSW Medicine down the track? Um, as Cody was saying earlier, I, actually you can, that's totally fine. We see lots of students taking a gap year because they, they want to go off and explore or they want to go and work for a time and, and you know, take a break from, I guess, their studies. And often those students, they come back, they're well refreshed and prepared to, to dive into studies. So um, you definitely can. You're just going to have to make sure that you apply um, to UNSW 
the year before you're looking to start with us. So if you're taking a gap year, during that gap year, you're going to need to sit the UCAT ANZ, um, fill out the MAP uh, components, and, and obviously make sure that you're prepared and you're, you're meeting all those selection criteria. Um, another student's asked as well about extracurriculars. Do we take extracurriculars into account in the application process? Now, as Sean was saying earlier, and Cody as well, there are those three criteria. So it's your academic merit, so your ATAR, for example, um, your UCAT ANZ score, and then your interview as well. And we combine them all together um, and rank everyone you know, based on ultimately the, the most competitive uh, applicants overall. So we, we, we combine all that together. Um, it's never going to go against you, but what we find is that students really need to be performing highly across each of those three criteria. And again, it is about ranking everyone based on that overall competitiveness. So we don't take into account extracurriculars, but I can tell you that we definitely do when it comes to things like scholarships. So um, if you jump onto the UNSW scholarships website, just type in UNSW scholarships into Google, you'll find that there's, there's many, many scholarships we give out to students from all walks of life. Um, and it really comes down to putting yourself out there. So it's a search and apply tool. Um, just type in the degrees and the, the su subject areas that you're interested in. Um, tick the box that you're a high school student, and it'll actually filter out all those that are relevant to you. And if you're going through that process, you're applying for scholarships, you'll find that extracurriculars really help give you an advantage because it can show you uh, you know, sorry, it can show us what you've been up to during high school, the fact that you can strike that balance, and we were talking about how important that balance is um, inside and outside the classroom. But I might throw to Angela and Josh now as well, just to get a feel for in years 11 and 12, what was, what was it like for you? Obviously, the entry requirements are you know, very competitive at UNSW, but did you spend all your time studying, or were you, you know, balancing things as much as you possibly could, I guess, while doing the HSC? Um, well, yeah, it's quite a long time ago now, actually. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, senior high school. Well, one thing I do remember is I definitely didn't spend all of my time studying. Um, I think having balance when you're a senior high school student is really, really important. Um, so obviously, um, I worked hard because I knew I wanted to do medicine and um, I knew you had to, you know, get a good academic mark for that. Um, but I also made sure that I had time to relax as well. So um, I did exercise. Um, I play musical instruments, so I made sure I kept up with that. Um, and I find that that not only, you know, gave me a mental break um, from high school mm -hmm. um, and academics and all of that, but I also find that um, it helped me um, perform better as well. Um, I think that if you have diversity in your life and you have that work-life balance, um, it sets you up well as a high school student, but it also sets you up well in whatever future career that you do. Um, so you can keep maintaining that work-life balance, um, you know, because work's only really going to get busier from here. I think having that habit now was really, really important. Um, so while I was busy, um, I really think that um, maintaining that and keeping up with the things you're interested in is really important. What about you, Josh? Yeah, no, year 11 and 12 uh, were the two best years of schooling for me. Lots of fun, got involved in like rock concerts, school musicals, directed the like comedy review. So don't drop any of that, keep it up. Um, and then I think only like at the kind of start of year 12, you know, started doing a bit of work on the UCAT. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, you hit the grind hard because it is worth it in the end. But keep up all those things. Um, do have fun. Do, you know, take care of yourself. Um, but, yeah, keep that balance. The comedy gig at your school. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. I, look, I'd love to, to, to kind of <laughs> dive deeper in this, this forum, but uh, we are rapidly running out of time, unfortunately. Um, there's a, a question here, though, which kind of branches off what you were just saying, which is about, should I start preparing for the UK at ANZ now, and how do I do it? Uh, and if, if I can take that question, well, I mean, it, the, the reality is it depends on which uh, year of entry you're looking to apply for. If you're looking to apply for 2023 entry, then obviously definitely start preparing for the, the UCAT. But Again, it goes to what we were saying before, that there's really no coaching we recommend all that. Just jump onto the, the UCAT ANZ website. There's a few practice exams you can do to get familiar with the kinds of questions that they're going to ask, the structure of it, um, what you can expect. Um, but really, that, that's, that's one of the key areas to, to kind of prepare. But don't feel like you need to put all this extra pressure on yourself. Um, it, it is about just you know, going that far and then uh, you know, seeing how you perform. And as Cody was saying before, it is about putting your best foot forward, but knowing that there's so many pathways out there um, across you know, all of all the clinical and the non-clinical careers we've spoken about earlier today to really make a massive impact in healthcare. And it, you know, part of this is that journey of finding out which is right for you. So on that note, we might wrap up. I'm going to throw a, a bit of a final curveball question to everyone. Um, and I'll start down this end and we'll work our way across. Um, Angela, first of all, if you were offering a piece of advice to 
any student who is thinking about studying medicine, what would your best piece of advice be? And then I'm going to throw that same question to Josh, and then Sean, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to answer that finally. Um, so Angela, you've got the, the hot seat. What would be um, your best piece of advice? I think if you're thinking of studying medicine, um, it obviously seems like this big process and there's a lot of things involved, um, you know, more than um, some other degrees that you might be interested in. Um, if I maybe had to go back to uh, maybe my year 11 and 12 self and tell her something, I would say that if you do truly want to do medicine, and I do think sit down and think about why you actually want to be a doctor, um, if you do truly want to be one, it's not really a question of if you're going to get in, but when. I think um, we're all so like, fast-tracked and we want to get in as soon as possible and then graduate as soon as possible and then start working. Um, but I think have patience and trust yourself to um, have a timeline. Um, so you don't really necessarily have to get in as soon as possible, right? If you want to be a doctor, um, I find that, you know, I'm studying along with people who didn't get in right after high school and, um, you know, took a gap year or they um, studied another degree first, maybe because they just didn't get in the first try. Um, but they're here now. They're having a great time in the program. Um, and I also find that they bring the certain level of wisdom and experience with life that I think is really, really valuable as well. So, um, you know, I guess if you want to, um, do medicine, then you want to get in as soon as possible. But I would just say, trust yourself um, and know that you are going to get there. Um, maybe not on the timeline that you'd ideally want, but you are going to get there um, eventually. So I guess that's the piece of advice I would give to myself. Yeah, look, I, I think great advice. And to speak to that as well, we do see that students who, you know, sometimes it takes them three, four, five different attempts to get into medicine. They have that resilience, that maturity, and that passion that means that they become great clinicians in the end. So it, it, I think, you know, saying that it's, it's a matter of when, not if, is, is a really good mindset for, for students to take away tonight. Um, Josh, how about you? Yeah, so having had some time to think, I'd break it down <laughs> into three things. So firstly, Get keen because it's worth it. Like when you're pushing through the grind of, you know, UCAT work, HSC, it, it can be stressful at times, but remind yourself how worth it it is. Like I do strongly believe this is the dream degree. It's so much fun. It's so worthwhile. Um, so keep reminding yourself of what you're working towards and why. Second thing, keep up your friendships. Um, keep your family and your friends close because they are so important to get you through it. Um, keep up your sport. Keep up your music. And then the third thing is that once you get here, have fun. There's so many amazing opportunities, so seize every single one of them. And yeah, hope to see you guys here soon. Brilliant. Uh, look, I love that you made that numerical as well. It was very easy to follow. Thank you. Um, Sean, <laughs> over to you. Yeah, they stole my thunder. Uh, I would say write your own script, and it just fits in with that. And, and, I, and I don't mean prescribe medications for yourself, which is illegal, and you shouldn't be doing that. But write your own script for what you want to do in, in life and in study, you know. So it's all these things that we've talked about. Do what you want to do. Do what you love. Do what for your own motivation. Don't do something because you think you have to. Don't do something because you want to be like someone else. It's all about you. And, and studying anything gives you that opportunity. Studying medicine, I think, gives you in a massive amounts. And, and not just studying medicine, but practising medicine. You can keep going. I never thought when I was... A, medical student that I'd be up here at this stage doing this from the other side. You know, it's, it, you just take the opportunities as they arise. Brilliant. Look, I think it's a really good note to end on. So thank you all for your insights and, and wisdom tonight. And, and thank you again for being involved. Um, you know, on behalf of, I guess, all the attendees out there, um, hopefully they're, they're leaving this being a little bit more confident about applying for, for medicine. We know we've run through it, all the ins and outs, the admission side of things. But, but really, I think some of those key takeaways there at the end around mindset, how to approach being a, a medical student, striving for that balance, um, it really is something hopefully students are, are getting excited for. So thank you as well to all those who are attending at home. It's been a pleasure having you here at UNSW tonight. Um, we know that there's lots that you're, you're probably still curious about, uh, lots of other questions as well that we haven't been able to get to answering today, unfortunately. Our UNSW Medicine website has a fantastic FAQs page, which we're going to link to you as well, in addition to the recording of tonight's session. Uh, but there's lots of other events that you can tag along to, to chat one-on-one -on -one with ourselves, our students, our staff, and academics. Um, so come along to some of our experience days, our open days. Um, on the, the screen there, you can see the Connect With Us, which will keep you in the loop uh, for some of those events, so you can be the first to register. Uh, but you can also reach out at any point in time, Monday to Friday, uh, you know, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., to our future student advisors. 
their sole role is to make sure that, you know, like myself, you've got all the answers to all of your questions. So pick up the phone, have a chat with them. You can live chat with them. You can send us an email. We're always happy to have a chat um, and work out what that unique pathway to UNSW Medicine is for you. So on behalf of everyone here tonight, thank you again for joining us. And we wish you all the very best for your studies and look forward to seeing you on campus sometime soon. Cheers. You. You're the person the world needs. Life is changing and the future is uncertain. You may not know how or why yet, but you know you're here to make a difference. You're not waiting for the universe to give you the answers. You're finding them for yourself. Challenging echoes with evidence. Few people have great ideas. Even fewer make them happen. It takes a dreamer, an explorer, a researcher, a leader, a thinker. It takes someone like you. <laughs>